No fewer than 11 candidates, Phil, are running for the Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate next fall. That primary is just under one year away. The primary will be August 9th, 2022, presumably to take on Ron Johnson, assuming he runs for his third term. That's a lot of candidates. I don't know if we can talk about them all in one podcast. Well, we probably shouldn't talk about them all <laughs> because several of them aren't worth talking about. Several of them I've never heard of. I don't know what to talk <laughs> and about. And you're smarter than the average bear. Interestingly, 10 candidates also ran in the Democratic primary for governor back in 2018. Tony Evers, at that time viewed as something of a moderate in that race, won. You mean the evil socialist Tony Evers? <laughs> you're channeling the GOP legislature there. I sound like Robin Voss. Do you have any idea how radical his agenda is? He wants to mandate euchre as our national card game. <laughs> well, that is offensive to me. I think it should be sheep's head. Okay. Today on Center Stage, the Wisconsin State Journal's political podcast from the Sensible Center of Wisconsin Politics, we're going to talk about the race for U.S. Senate next year. Yes, another election is coming up before you know it. We'll play some audio clips from the top tier candidates and tell you who we think is best able to defeat Ron Johnson. I'm Scott Milfred. I'm the editorial page editor for the Wisconsin State Journal. And I'm Phil Hands. I'm the editorial cartoonist for the Wisconsin State Journal. We are two-sevenths of the Wisconsin State Journal editorial board. The two-sevenths that needs to start finding a better lead-in because two-sevenths is really hard to say over and over again. It sounds like a lift. It sounds like a lift. race for U.S. Senate Wisconsin is considered one of three toss-up races at this point by the Cook Report in Washington, D.C. It sounds like Ron Johnson is the only Republican up for re-election in a state that Joe Biden won. Plenty of people want to take him on, even though the thought is when you have a Democratic president in the White House, and in this case we do with Joe Biden, that the midterm election after he is elected, historically, that's when the president's party doesn't do well. No, because people sort of are fed up with the party in power and and they want some change and it's sort of a referendum on the president. And honestly, the president's had kind of a rough week with the disaster in Afghanistan. So disaster. We'll see if he can recover uh, from that in time ahead of the 2022 uh, election uh, next year. Who knows what we're going to be talking about a year from now. When we were anticipating the race for president, we never thought it was going to be about COVID. No, we didn't. So yeah. who knows if and, Af Afghanistan will even be on the radar at that point. Considering all the morons who won't get vaccinated in this country, we probably still be <laughs> talking about COVID in two years. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's lots of big names here on the Democratic side running. There's one name that's got a lot of recognition, and that's Mandela Barnes, and he was one of the more recent candidates to get into the race. He's currently the lieutenant governor. He is all of the color and personality of the ticket of Evers and Barnes. You know, he's, <laughs> he's a young, charismatic guy compared to the old uncharismatic. Is uncharismatic too kind a word for Tony Evers? I don't think so, but Evers won. And Biden won as the sort of old white guy, somewhat boring candidates. What, which, do, you mean, what do you mean somewhat <laughs> well, boring? Well, I'm lumping Biden in with that. <laughs> and I think that was partly because people wanted a change from the bombast of Trump. They, they decided, let's go with some experience here. Let's go with some measured leadership that's experienced and is a little more traditional. And speaking of the bombast of Trump, Ron Johnson has been one of Trump's most strongest and ardent defenders over the last couple of years, yes. still to this day. But I agree with you. Mandela Barnes has to have the most name recognition of any of the candidates because here. Because he's, he's won a statewide office and he's been on a ballot statewide. Now, there's other candidates running that have also been on statewide ballots. The other thing that Medella Barnes has going for him is that he just got the endorsement of State Senator Chris Larson. You might say, so what? But State Senator Chris Larson is from Milwaukee and was running for U.S. Senate. 
on the Democratic side. So we've already had one candidate actually drop out. And throw his support, I'm doing yeah. air quotes around yeah. support, uh, behind Mandela Barnes. So I think I think right now Mandela Barnes is the person to beat on the Democratic side. Yeah, he's got the momentum. He's got this sort of laid back style. He is a young African-American political leader who does have experience in the legislature, who does have experience as lieutenant governor. And keep in mind, a young African-American likable candidate won twice statewide here in Barack Obama. It's likely that he will get some pretty good turnout in Milwaukee. There are two counties that have Democratic votes, that have significant Democratic votes in the state, Milwaukee County and Dane County. And Mandela Barnes is from Milwaukee County. He'll probably get some significant support from that part of the state, uh, which is can be enough to really propel you. I remember that, was it, is it Mela Mitchell who ran for, for governor against Tony Evers? Yes. He finished second. And it was almost entirely because he had really strong turnout and support in Milwaukee. And another young, charismatic African-American man. He also was a union leader. I think he got a lot of the union votes out. It was a lot of Milwaukee votes. It was it was it was he he had I think he he might have even beat Tony Evers in the city of Milwaukee. A few things going against Mandela Barnes. One is he is the lieutenant governor. We mentioned that as a positive that he's one statewide and people know his name, sort of. But I mean, lieutenant governors don't have a great record of winning the top of the ticket when they try. I mean, McCallum was a lieutenant governor who inherited the job from Tommy Thompson when he left for D.C. McCallum, the boy governor? Boy governor. And he proceeded to lose right away to Jim Doyle when challenged. Uh, Barbara Lawton couldn't really get further than being the sleepy office of lieutenant governor. I mean, lieutenant governors don't do a lot. Tony Evers has given Barnes a kind of a higher profile than a lot of lieutenant governors get. But still, he is the lieutenant governor. Yeah, it's not That's like, not a real uh, traditional jumping pad to higher office. I mean, it's more important than secretary of state in Wisconsin. <laughs> But only slightly so. A Secretary of State is just a closet in the basement of the Capitol. But That's right. Their office is actually worse than ours. <laughs> I think our podcasting studio might be nicer than, uh, <laughs> than, than Doug Follett's closet yeah. Well, and copy machine. I think they still let him have a copy machine. Well, you got to have them. Like something. Um, and then there, there were a few small things. I don't think they're big things, but, you know, he hadn't paid some taxes and parking tickets. He had sort of fibbed about having a college degree. Now he has earned that degree. He was just shy of that. So there's a few things like that around him that have come up as news stories. But I'd say Walker never graduated from college either. So, I mean, I don't think he ever said he did, though. That doesn't hold you back in Wisconsin. That's true. Here's a little audio from Mandela Barnes's video that he put out, Tower his campaign. Excuses are nothing but a dead end. And expectations are something to be shattered. We can't settle for what is. We have to reach for what can be. Pushing hard every step of the way. Every single day. When the obstacles seem insurmountable, I was taught to draw strength from something bigger. Because with faith, anything is possible. There are no idle hands here. No low we haven't carried. No one waiting for a handout or a free pass. But that hard work isn't paying off like it used to. The system isn't working. We see so many people who are working longer hours and harder, oftentimes for much less. And then there's the insurance companies. I mean, they don't even bat an eye if you have to get charged an arm and a leg for even thinking about seeing a doctor. My mom taught school for 30 years. My dad worked third shift at the factory. When I think about their hard work, about everything that Wisconsin families have on the line, there's no option to tap out, no towel to throw in. Instead of changing our dreams, we got to change the game. They've got him running. This guy really looks fit. Oh, Mandela He's not Barnes. just running for U.S. Senate. He is running through, literally running throughout this video. But, but can he beat you and me, Scott? I mean, I we, we are both avid runners. I'm pretty sure he can. And uh, he's in church. He was even riding a tractor. But unlike Mike Dukakis, they didn't dress him like a farmer. Yeah. This, I can't drive a tractor. So he's already more qualified than I am. So we're on the top tier. I'd, I think you're right. Mandela Barnes is probably the guy to beat at this time point, although he's far, far from uh, invincible in this race. No, 
and we're just getting started. I mean, you also have another statewide constitutional officer who is running is Sarah Godlewski. She is the state treasurer. Whose job is so important, we've called for it to be removed several times. (laughs) Yeah, she has called the treasurer's job our fiscal watchdog. Um, I think the fiscal bureau is much more of our fiscal watchdog, maybe the audit bureau. I don't really think of the treasurer as doing much to watchdog the state's finances. Well, what she meant, Scott, was that she sits in her office, which is nicer than the Secretary of State's <laughs> office, and she can watch dogs walk around the park from her office. <laughs> ah, okay. Thanks for explaining that. She is a Eau Claire native. But she's li- she's lived in Madison for quite some time, I believe. Fresh face. She's a woman. There's not as many women running, and uh, women candidates seem to be doing well as of late. Our other senator is a, is a woman, so it's not like they can't win statewide in Wisconsin. I think Sarah Godlewski, you and I saw her speak at the preview of the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee that never happened at the Pfizer Center. I think she's a good speaker. I think she's polished. She, in her video, which we're going to play a clip of, uh, rather than talking so much about herself, she really went after Ron Johnson. So maybe part of her thing is going to be really trying to aggressively go after Johnson. She got a little attention as the state treasurer. I think we had a story for announcing a program. It's basically opening up the state retirement plan and letting private citizens buy into it. Yeah, so she's she's really trying to make the most out of her state treasurer's office, even though the legislature with in bipartisan with bipartisan support has really watered down what that office does. Well, it's just removed a lot of the duties and moved a lot of the duties from an elected position to, as Trump would say, the deep state of the fiscal bureau, which is career experts who understand (laughs) how moving money around the state works. She's had a couple of minor flaps that were embarrassing. I think uh, somebody figured out she didn't vote in the 2016 race for president, even though she had been working hard for Hillary Clinton. There are a couple things like that, but... Yeah, but like, nothing anybody will remember. But like 25,000 people in Wisconsin didn't vote for Hillary Clinton in that election. <laughs> I'm Sarah Godlewski, and this is Senator Ron Johnson. We're, how do I put it nicely? Different. During this pandemic, I've worked to make sure students in every school district got the technology they needed for online learning. Ron Johnson tried to stop people from getting $1,400 checks, more vaccines, and relief for Main Street. I think we've given people enough help. I grew up in Eau Claire with two little sisters and parents who were both public school teachers. They taught me to work hard and tell the truth. Ron Johnson? Well, the truth really isn't his thing. This didn't seem as like an armed insurrection to me. He says the attackers would never break the law. That uh, truly respect law enforcement would never do anything to, to break a law. I don't think you show respect by beating and killing police officers. I waited tables at Pizza Hut and Baker Square to help pay for college, and I organized other students to expand voting rights. Ron Johnson? He tells people the last election was stolen just because he didn't like the outcome. Another top-tier candidate, he's rich and a lot of people know him because of the Bucks, is Alex Lazary. Yeah, he is rich, and he is involved with the Bucks, and that's all I know about him. Well, he's a native New Yorker, so uh, just like Trump, I guess. He's the business guy, I think. Uh, at least he's touted that. And he's touted himself as a responsible business guy. He, he's made a big point that when they built the Pfizer Forum, they used a lot of uh, minority contractors. They had good wages. He's He says he wants to uh, adopt a workers' bill of rights. So... He's got a lot of support over in Milwaukee. I think uh, the we'll play a clip here from his video, but he had David Crowley, the Milwaukee County executive, who's African-American, touting his bid along with some others. His one dust-up was that he was able to jump the line for the, the phony fake doesn't work vaccine, <laughs> which it does work. The vaccine totally works, but Republicans were all on his case because he got a vaccine early – he said it was left over or something like that at a nursing home where his friend worked or something like that. Uh, but it's kind of ironic to have Republicans who now say, well, it's personal choice whether to get a vaccine or not, <laughs> complaining about him getting a vaccine early. 
Yeah, I think at the point he was getting that vax, that doesn't mean much to me. At that point, they were just trying to get vaccine out the door. So if he or his wife had a connection to somewhere that they had some extra vaccine and needed to use it up, whatever. I didn't. I didn't care about that. Well, you and I don't care about it, but yeah. I think I think Republicans tried to make a little hay out of it. Yeah, I get you. I get your point there. I think the bigger thing for him, which in the video they try to counter a little bit, is you know just that he's the son of a billionaire, sort of silver spoonish, and he's in this race as a young man. Let's face it, because his dad was a billionaire, I sort of think of the. Uh, CCR, John Fogarty song, you know, Fortunate Son. He is a fortunate and it son. It used to be, you know, Fogarty with pride would say, I ain't no senator's son. Well, you know, I ain't no billionaire's son is maybe the new version of that. Yeah. Um, but I'd say what he's really got going for him is, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks did just win the championship. You get some good vibes coming out of that. He's also been a guy that along with his famous players, I guess I'm saying his players, I mean Milwaukee Bucks players, he's been on the streets of Milwaukee during the social unrest and the racial reckoning because of violence against unarmed African Americans by police in some cases. He's been out with the players as something of a social activist in the streets. And I think there's – we don't see a lot of that over here in Madison, but my impression is that in Milwaukee, he's a bigger name than he is over here. And he's got some cred that we don't know about. Yeah, and maybe he'll get Giannis' endorsement, and that That, would be be a big deal. (laughs) That would be a big deal. Except we wouldn't be able to see him because Giannis would be three feet taller That's than That's right. Him. You couldn't fit him in the same TV yeah, screen. Yeah, you can't get him in the same screen. Here's a bit of his video. People have asked me why I want to run for office now. We need a new way of thinking and a new perspective. We've lived through three systemic shocks to the system over the last 20 years. 9-11, the Great Recession, and now this pandemic. And we still haven't fixed things. In terms of leadership, Alex, make sure everyone is included. What makes him tick is his love and respect for people. Alex has a very unique background. This isn't politics as usual. With Alex, you get a different feeling, a different vibe, and that's what Wisconsin needs, change. I want to ask our companies to earn their tax cuts. If their manufacturing operations and supply chains are coming from America, if they're paying their workers $20 an hour and continuing to do things that make this country better, then great, you've earned your tax cut. I want to create a workers' bill of rights that protects workers and ensure that people are paid a fair and living wage, given the right to unionize and bargain. When we were building Pfizer Forum, we were able to create over 10,000 jobs and bring new people into the workforce. Another guy I would consider top tier, I noticed the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel when they broke this down, they had Tom Nelson as second tier. He's the top of the second tier, though. He is like he is like <laughs> I, the best player on the B team. <laughs> I would consider him top tier. I mean, when you think about it, Tom Nelson has a lot more experience. I know experience doesn't seem to matter much anymore in Understanding politics. Understanding how government works and how to solve problems is not important <laughs> in government. Yeah, unfortunately, that seems to be becoming the case. But, I mean, here's a guy who's been the county executive of Outagamie County. That's not a small county. Or a liberal county. No. In fact, uh, Donald Trump won that county in the race for president over Joe Biden, 58,000 votes to 48,000 votes. Yeah. And this was in the last election. So here's a guy with some cred. Like a lot of people, he makes a play for Bernie Sanders uh, supporters. He was a Bernie Sanders delegate. Oh, okay. Uh, Yet he's representing a pretty moderate county that actually went for Trump in the last election. So I'd say that's an experienced politician. He also was the majority leader for the Democrats in the legislature back in 09 and 10. Okay. Uh, when the Democrats refused to adopt nonpartisan redistricting. So it's his fault. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I'm just I'm just throwing that as, as a dig on... On Democrats. Yeah. Uh, he's a clever guy. He uh, He's been running for like two years. Yeah, and he had this full Nelson. His campaign was doing a full Nelson, which is uh, traveling to all 72 counties of the state in 72 days. It's kind of clever. That is kind of clever. And he he pulled uh, what Scott Walker called a political stunt back in 2017. Walker came in 
for a big uh, bipartisan kumbaya touting tourism in out of Gamey County. And after the press conference, uh, Nelson, with the cameras rolling, uh, went after him on Obamacare. Ah. Uh, and he got into a little tit for tat with Walker, but that drew some state headlines. I, I guess what I'm saying is he's not just experienced; he's he's kind of nuanced. He was against a local sales tax, which most counties now have. Yeah, I think there's a lot more to this guy than a lot of people know. And I'm not saying I'm endorsing him or that he's going to win the nomination. I'm just saying I do consider him top tier. And I think if you look at this field of candidates, you got to put him at the top when it comes to experience. Yeah, but we all know that experience doesn't matter. Here's some of what he said when he announced way last year for this race. Hi, I'm Tom Nelson. I'm the Ottawa County Executive here in Northeast Wisconsin. We are the hottest of the hot spots in the country. I mean, the COVID crisis is out of control. We're doing all that we can at the local level. And the story here in Northeast Wisconsin is the same across the country. There's just no help in sight. And people like Ron Johnson have made this worse. It didn't have to be this way. When we elect people like Ron Johnson, people get hurt. And that is no exaggeration. I mean, who gets tested for COVID and then turns around and goes to a party and puts people at risk? We should ask more from our U.S. Senator. Amy Coney Baird, that was the last straw. The ACA, a woman's right to choose, labor rights, all of that is at stake. Hey, Ron Johnson, go to one of our packed hospitals, talk to our doctors, talk to our nurses, go to a county executive or mayor's office and see what it's like to make real decisions, make tough decisions. Someone needs to go to Washington to do the work that you're supposed to do. So we've talked about the top tier and yeah. then the guy that you think should be in the top tier, but other people think is like the like the best player on the B team. Is there anybody else worth talking about? Yeah, I think there's a few others that are getting a little attention. Uh, you've got Alder Shantia Lewis from Milwaukee. Uh, she's an older woman that, you know, if she was an older woman in Madison, we'd know all about her and be talking about her, I'm sure. Yeah. She did get some attention for her video. We'll play a little bit of that. Calling herself a mom, a vet, a fighter. She was in the Air Force. She is an African-American woman who's a pastor of a church. Kind of touted that she's she's done things that people said she couldn't do and she's overcome things. And, you know, I think a compelling life story. And, and she has, unlike some candidates... Uh, that we'll talk about here. The, you know, she has held public office. Uh, she does have some support, particularly in the Milwaukee area. So she's got a good biography, some experience, but probably not enough to to, to rise to the top at the end of the day. I think if you have if you have Mandela Barnes running over in Milwaukee, and you have Alex Lazry, that's eating up a lot of Milwaukee there's votes a, and a lot of endorsements. There's a lot of Milwaukee candidates in this race. Yeah, I mean, so if you're not the better known Milwaukee candidate, it's really hard to get traction. But I would consider her second tier, maybe if, if nothing else, based on her compelling narrative and that really strong video that she put out. Okay. I'm Shantia Lewis, and all my life, I've been told what I can't do. They told me, women like you can't join the Air Force, yet I did, and proudly served my country alongside heroes. I've also heard, women like you can't be pastors, but I am, and my faith and this community are my foundation. When I ran for Alderwoman on the Milwaukee Common Council, it was women like you can't win. Yet, I won, and a big win it was. Wisconsin is home, right here in Milwaukee. It's where I graduated from Alverno College, started a family, and where we raised our three kids. As a wife, a mother, and a city leader, I've seen firsthand what this pandemic has done to our economy and our community. I know Wisconsin families are struggling to make ends meet. I work with small businesses that are fighting every day to survive while the wealthy prosper. Wisconsin can do better than Ron Johnson. Another second tier candidate, I would say, is Jillian Batino. She's a Wausau radiologist. 
comes off as really sincere in her introductory video. Hasn't held public office. I don't. I don't really understand some. Sometimes people where you know you run for U.S. Senate, but you haven't been an alderman. It, it or served on school board or she's a physician running for U.S. Senate during a pandemic. That is a plus. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, she walked by Lambeau Field in her video. She uh, oh, so she's a Packer fan. She well, is that's, a Packer that's, that's, fan. That's, that's a pro. Not Can you it. get elected to U.S. Senate if you're a closet Bears fan in Wisconsin? Who was the Bears fan that ran not too long ago? Was Soglin not a Packers fan? Maybe Soglin doesn't care what people think about him. She apparently has some money, and her husband's a physician too, so they are well known in the Wausau area. I'm Jillian Bettino. I'm running for U.S. Senate to protect the future of our democracy. My parents were teachers and wonderful role models. They modeled compassion, responsibility, and advocacy, and expected the same from us. I've dedicated my life to medicine and public service. Ben and I raised our kids in Wausau, where we enjoyed great friends, strong public schools, and lots of outdoor fun. As physicians born, raised, and educated in the Midwest, we've worked hard for the health of Wisconsin's veterans, workers, black, brown, indigenous people, women, children, and the LGBTQ community. As a radiologist, I'm honored to help the mothers, daughters, and sisters of Wisconsin in the battle against breast cancer. Another candidate who just announced who I'd say is on the B team but looking to get higher is Stephen Olicara. Oh, we just got a letter supporting him from that political powerhouse, Barb Lawton. <laughs> yeah, Barbara Lawton uh, just endorsed him in a letter to the editor in our newspaper. Uh, he talked- In the most roundabout way possible. He's a little bit like – who's the guy from your neighborhood that ran for – Oh, Raj Shukla? He's got a little Raj Shukla in him where he's very optimistic and progressive and young and new. Uh, but Rob didn't win either for mayor. Um, and they're both uh, in- Indians too. or from, from They're both – you know, their parents are both from India I believe too. He's the son of Indian immigrants, UW grad – He's an entrepreneur. He's a young political leader organizer. He started this millennial action project, which takes credit for pulling more young people into politics. He talks about a better politics, a movement of dignity. And I'm not being sarcastic on that. I did, though, think it was a little odd that in the story when he announced, it was talking about how he wanted to find sort of consensus and build agreement among people. And then he sort of touts his love for Bernie Sanders, who is consistently ranked as the worst member of U.S. Senate in terms of finding agreement with other senators. Plays the least well with others. Yeah. So we'll see. You never know. He's young and maybe he can catch some fire, but yeah, not a top tier candidate. Here's some of what he said in the video that he's put out. Hi, I'm Stephen Olikara. I'm an entrepreneur, nonprofit founder, and lifelong Wisconsinite. And I believe the time has come for us to build a new kind of politics. Powerful forces in Washington have been dividing us up against each other while leaving the most vulnerable communities behind. This is a flawed system that profits on contempt and hate and dehumanization. And we have far too many politicians out there more than willing to traffic in the style of politics. I think it's wrong because we have impoverished communities who aren't having real shots of dignified work. We have farmers on the verge of bankruptcy. We have small business owners shutting down. See, that's the problem with the system. While the politicians have the food fight at the top, the people at the bottom are stuck. And then finally, we have four other candidates that, honestly, I just don't know much about, but I think we should name them. Kao Lee, an Appleton restaurant owner. Adam Murphy, a business consultant from Franklin. Peter Pekarski, Milwaukee attorney and Daryl Williams, who is an administrator in the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs. Hey, these people may be great. I still say the way you run for U.S. Senate is you win some offices that are lower than that to build some experience in government and try to get your name out there. One person who at least so far is not running for this seat that I think would 
make a s- excellent candidate is Ron Kind. He just said he's stepping down from the seat he's held for a quarter century in Western Wisconsin, the third congressional district, and was probably going to lose in November uh, in 2022. I don't know about that. He just won, but there is redistricting, and it's not clear how his district is going to appear. Yeah, I would think if you've got a crowded race, a moderate might be able to pull off a win. I mean, that's sort of what Tony Evers did against a whole bunch of more progressive candidates. Candidates, but it doesn't seem like he's going to run. He talked about he was looking at it earlier this year, but now in his in announcing he was leaving Congress, he said he's run out of gas. Yeah, he, I mean, he might just honestly be tired of being in D.C. and working in politics. That's what he said. Now, he also said he's going to break the tape as he finishes his uh, final term here in Congress, in the House of Representatives, that he's got a lot of work to do in these final 18 months. So he's out of gas, but he's also going to break the tape. I'm, there was some mixed metaphors. There's a lot of, well, I mean, as a politician, they don't, <laughs> yeah. they don't speak in consistent, concise metaphors. The latest headline on the Marquette poll was that Ron Johnson's popularity is way down because last October he was at 38% favorable and now he's at 35% favorable, and his unfavorables went from 36 in October of last year to 42 now. Ah. So it sounds like he's a lot less popular. Same venue, Baldwin, she's only got a 40% favorable right now, compared to a 39% unfavorable, which is pretty similar to Ron Johnson's current numbers, and I would say that she's a lot less polarizing than Johnson is. And she had a similar drop from her October numbers of last year, so I think people are just more down on politicians than they were. One thing she has to her advantage, she is not up for re-election. Well, yeah, that's true. (laughs) Our theme music is by Tube Tester.